This video will be focused on whether you should think about getting further education beyond just a bachelor's. I will be a little more broad to capture as many careers as possible, but there will be some focus on the audience of this channel, which is mostly engineering, math, and science majors. Now, there are many types of further education you can go into past a bachelor's, including a master's and PhD, medical school, nursing school, pharmacy school, law school, veterinary school, dental school, or an MBA or master's of business administration, and so on. So obviously jobs like being a doctor, pharmacist, lawyer, vet, etc. require further education which will not be the focus of this video because plain and simple you need further education for those careers. You should pick a major that fulfills all the prereqs you need and really focus on making yourself as qualified of a candidate as possible including a high GPA, relevant experience, good letters of rec, or whatever it is that the school you are attending needs. Many are competitive so you really want to do well even in undergrad. But the rest of this video will be focused on the STEM field as well as business. So first, some statistics on money. The average person with a bachelor's degree in the US has a salary of 56,000, and someone with a master's has an average of 68,000, which is a difference of $12,000 per year. But this will differ in different occupations, which you can see in a Bureau of Labor Statistics article linked in the description. The average cost of a master's tuition has a large range, it said between 30,000 to 120,000. But let's just say it costs you 40,000 all in loans. So yes, a master's degree is a big financial decision. But if you take all these averages and assume the tuition was all in loans, then a person with a master's degree over 40 years would make about $500,000 more in their lifetime. Then account for the $40,000 in loans plus interest, and let's say minus two years worth of salary that you don't have because you are in a master's program, you still net around $300,000 more in your lifetime. So yes, the master's degree definitely pays off in the long run if your pay will definitely increase. I like playing around with these numbers and showing them to you guys, but remember this is a huge generalization. There's no way to predict your salary and how you'll advance throughout your career regardless of your degree. Many articles even said that a master's degree might not even boost your salary that much in some occupations. So just be aware and do your own research on the career you want to go into. Now first I want to briefly discuss getting an MBA before I go into the engineering, science, and math graduate degrees. An MBA is for those who are looking to go into a business related field or management or something similar. Otherwise it probably won't be financially worth it. People in various careers like engineering might want to switch to the business side of things as well, so they go back and get an MBA so they are more qualified for the job. But after asking and looking around, there were some things to note. One is that most people should not get their MBA right after getting their bachelor's. Nearly everyone recommended that you go into the workforce for a few years, like maybe three or five, and figure out whether you actually want to get your MBA, figure out whether it's actually required for what you want to do, will it be financially worth it, and then you can also talk to people at your job to learn more and make a more informed decision. There are situations where it might help to get one right after a bachelor's, like if you've been working for a business and they offer to pay for it, or there's a joint program where you get a bachelor's then an MBA. Otherwise, get your bachelor's and then try to find work. In fact, I read a Forbes article from an MBA graduate who said that he went to get his MBA right after undergrad only because it would be paid for, but if he could go back, he said he would probably not do this again. It was stated a lot that an MBA is not some guarantee that you will be successful or get a huge pay increase, so it's important to make an informed decision before spending tens of thousands of dollars for the degree. It definitely does open doors, especially at large Fortune 500 companies, but it's not any sort of guarantee and I noticed a lot of debate around it as well. If an MBA is not for you, there are other options such as a master's in finance, economics, statistics, or accounting. And these aren't the same, but they do help with careers in business and finance and so on. So now let's talk about engineering and whether you should pursue further education. Now I'm assuming that you got a bachelor's in engineering and will get a master's in the same type of engineering or maybe something a little different, like computer engineering than software engineering as an example. So do you need a master's in engineering? No. With just a bachelor's, you will be qualified for a large majority of jobs and are able to start your career. But there were two majors I consistently heard of people saying you should really get a master's, and those were biomedical engineering and engineering physics. For biomedical engineers, you should either consider getting a master's in it or get a bachelor's in it, then specialize in something in a master's program like electrical or mechanical engineering. This is one of the fastest growing engineering fields at the moment, 
but even the biomedical engineers that I talked to were all getting their master's degree, and when I asked them why, the reason was pretty much the same, in that it's much more important for their field. Engineering physics is a much less common major, but I read that more than half of those students go on to pursue either a master's in physics or some type of engineering. You get a good foundation on both engineering and physics, but people pursue further education so they can become more of an expert on one. And this is not to say that you cannot get a job with just a bachelor's. Obviously that would be too much of a generalization. But going through lots of forums and talking to people with these degrees, it came up for these two majors so much that you should really consider a master's that I really needed to address it. Now for most people watching, again, you don't need a master's. But a big reason besides money or learning more about the subject to consider a master's and even a PhD is if you want to go into research and do the true design work. With just a bachelor's, it's less likely you'll be doing the initial design work on the newest technologies and innovations. For example, aerospace engineers work on the propulsion of a spacecraft. They analyze commonly used propulsion methods and determine how to make everything just right for the spacecraft that's being worked on so that it can provide the right thrust to the spacecraft, there's enough fuel for the mission, and that the tanks are sized correctly, and so on. But with a master's or PhD, you could design the next breakthrough in propulsion methods that are being worked on that could propel the spacecraft to greater speeds as an example. See how in one case you're working on something entirely new and doing the design and research, while in the other case you are doing the engineering work that takes the design and figures out how to implement it with the spacecraft. Again, this is not to say that with a master's or PhD you will be guaranteed a job like this, or that with a bachelor's you could never get a job like this. There's a lot of stuff in this video that's not so black and white. In fact, I've heard of companies in which people with bachelor's degree were doing the design work because they worked up to that position. But generally speaking, the people who work in these areas have more advanced degrees. Also, a common thing to see on an engineering job page is something with the requirements like at least three to four years experience and a bachelor's degree, or one to two years experience and a master's degree. So you see how you can qualify with both degrees, but they kind of count your master's as experience. So when you enter the workforce, you don't need as much extra experience before being qualified for some of those slightly higher up positions. Now moving on to the sciences. First, when it comes to chemistry, biochemistry, and biology, these are the most common degrees to get before going into healthcare, like becoming a nurse, doctor, dentist, pharmacist, etc. And actually, as a side tangent, psychology was listed as one of the most popular undergrad degrees to get from medical school. But with these majors, if you don't go into healthcare or something related, you should really consider getting a master's. With just a bachelor's in these sciences, it's likely you'll start out as a lab tech, where you mostly will follow procedures given you by a superior, and it'll be much harder to further your career. This isn't the only possible job, but a common one. But if you want to do the more academically challenging design work of creating new drugs and medicine, or doing forensics work, or whatever it is that you want to do, you'll want a master's or even a PhD. This will allow you to do research, move up faster and do more exciting work at a company, or even become a professor. Now moving on to physics. For this major, someone with a PhD said that if you want to be a quote physicist, as in someone who actually does research in physics, you usually need to go beyond just a bachelor's. Now people with just a bachelor's in physics do have job opportunities. They go into a variety of fields, often outside of physics like engineering jobs, programming or software developer jobs, finance jobs, etc. So it really just depends on you. But for those physics research jobs like studying biotechnology, astrophysics, plasma physics, laser physics, nanotechnology, etc., a master's and or a PhD at least will help you get into more of the research. You can get jobs in those sectors with just a bachelor's, but for long-term careers in research, you likely need further education. Now moving on to math. For pure math, you will definitely want to get a master's and most likely a PhD as well. Many of these students want to work in academia and do research slash become a professor, which will of course require a PhD. For applied math, it's not as necessary to get a master's, because just like physics, you can get jobs in software development, computer science, finance, and more. But by getting a master's, it will for one, just make your application look better, but two, could open you up to mathematical research jobs in industry. Like doing algorithm design at a company like Google, or with Uber that needs to optimize its dynamic pricing and shortest route algorithms. I knew of a math professor whose previous job was doing cryptography for the government. 
you can do research at big defense companies, and so on. Something also to consider is getting a master's in something that uses applied math, like maybe statistics or computer science. This will make you more marketable because of your broad background as well as a graduate degree in an applied field. And note, when I talk about research, there's academic research like at a university and various labs, and there's industrial research which is often done at companies that is aimed at making products. So academic research has much more range. You can work on so much as long as someone is willing to fund it. You could study black holes in space, theorems in pure mathematics, lasers, renewable energy methods, and so on. And obviously these are for different degrees, but there's a lot you could do. It could be product related or not. But industrial research would be like working at Lockheed Martin, Intel, Apple, Toyota, and doing research on new types of technology for the purpose of making a product to be sold. So things like nanotechnology, harvesting energy from vehicles, high-speed circuits, prosthetic body parts, and so on are important to those companies. The research is more specific, but it's for something that will be put out into the market. Now I've said before that there are companies that will pay for further education for you, which can make the decision way easier. You shouldn't rely on this, but do know it's an option because that would save you tens of thousands of dollars. But note that a lot of people say they will start working after school, then go back to get their masters later, and end up not doing it. The freedom of not having homework and exams can be hard to walk away from, so just be aware of everything. Obviously people do it, but just might not be as easy as you think. So reasons to get a further education is so you're more qualified for a certain job that you want, or you want to learn more about the field, you want to increase your salary, or you want to change in career. Some reasons to not get further education include the cost, sometimes it's just not right for people depending on their situation. It will take time, an average of two years for a master's. And it might not even guarantee advancement or a salary increase, so make sure you do your own research on specifically what you want to go into. And note this video did not cover how competitive certain professional schools are or how big the job market is for some of those degrees. There was a lot of controversy and debate even from people with these degrees as to whether it was worth it. So definitely do your own research, but hopefully this gave you a starting point and I hope you guys comment below any specific questions you have because I know this was mostly a general video. But if you like this information, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.